Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tevin Dillard. I live in Chancellor Park. I mow lawns, mowing, edging, grass cutting legend. I sure am glad to join me here on this podcast. I want to let you know what's going on in my neck of the woods. Now, I started out years ago on the YouTubes and then the TikToks and the Instagrams now and the whatnots. I got the websites, the tavendiller.com, but right now, I want to clue you into what's happening in my neck of the woods on the Tavendiller podcast. You here? I'm here. I'm glad you joined me. Now I'm going to send it over to myself. This is like the pre-introduction, but let's get on to the real show today. I'm glad you joined me here. Bank, bank. Hey, y'all guys. Welcome to the Tap and Dillard Podcast, Seasons 9s, Episode 12s. We into the spring times. I know that. You know that. We have gone through the whole entire, every 31 days of the month of March. Did y'all guys have a happy Easter's? Happy Easter's! I hope it was a hoot. I hope you've had a great season. And now we jumped over to April Fool's Day. And if you listen to this on the day it comes out, it's April the twos. April the twos of the month of Aprils. And so that's where we at. That's where I'm at. That's where you at. Unless you listen to this on April the threes or maybe a year later. I don't know. I didn't go to school for figuring out when you listen to this podcast. All I'm saying is that's where I'm at. And boy, it has been a hoot in town. Now, you remember last week I was giving a little update on the show notes, uh, talking about that show in Wichita Falls. More tickets is moving on that. We about, well, about two months out, a little less than two months out. I'm going to be in Wichita Falls, Texas. And like I said, we're taking a big swing with this show. It's going to be a long one. It's going to be big. And there's a VIP after party. There's some VIP tickets left. You can check them on the on the website. There's red dots. Them's the VIPs. So a lot of the red dots are missing now because folks bought them. But there's some left. And then there's orange dots. That's the regular seating and the regular show. The VIP is, is the after show, too, with the donut party and the chocolate milk and more of me talking uh, mostly about donuts, but not entirely. So it's going to be a hoot. And then uh, just some housekeeping. Bacon, that's going to be in the show notes today, too. I got a good email from a friend this week. She had got some for her husband uh, for his birthday, and he's happy with that Tavins bag of bacon. And I appreciate y'all buying it, but also enjoying it. It's a hoot to see y'all enjoy it. Town Map shirt has been out one month now, so that's been moving over the merry month of March. And uh, maybe you got a hold of that, but there's a link to that, you know, in the show notes today, too. You see the uh, link for the bacon, link for the shirts and hats and tank tops and hoodies and all that kind of thing. And, and the personal video greetings, which folks have been uh, grabbing them up, too. So I'm happy to uh, share all that with you. I'm glad y'all's enjoying it. And I hope you're enjoying uh, the, the month of April as much as you've seen so far. So... I mentioned last week what J.T. Whitlow was up to, and, uh, well, long story, a little bit longer, we got a new zip line in the Chancellor Park, and it runs from J.T. Whitlow's trailer all the way over to mine. What could go wrong? Well, we already got a lot of traffic in the trailer park, and once we spread uh, the word about this, and I'm not saying I spread it by myself, just word spread. You know, new, something new pops up, word spread, folks talk about it. It got even busier in Chancellor Park, buddy. Let me put you like that. Candy Dilroy, you know, she catch all kind of wild animals. She caught crows before. I don't know why there's still one crow left flying around Chancellor Park. You think they tell their friends, don't get over there. Candy Dilroy, she'll catch you. She'll put a bonnet on you. She'll try to put you in a dress, have a tea party with you, put you in a cardboard box and make that your home. We crows, we live up, we live up in the trees, not in them cardboard boxes. But Candy got away with them animals. They end up coming around anyhow. There's, she got a feral cat over there. Uh, and then we got a zip line. She took little Candy. That's Chet Dilroy's grandbaby, in case you was wondering. She got a little brother named Will Dilroy. Anyhow, don't matter. What I'm saying is she took a feral cat on that zip line with her. And it landed on the kiddie pool. Uh, now, that, that I ne- ain't never heard a cat scream, but that feral cat screamed. Them feral cats, they a different breed. Like, that, they they almost human in the way they talk. They're like, look out. And I didn't say like that, but in my head, that's kind of what it said. Like, it was like, look at, you know, however a cat do it. I don't know. I don't speak cat. But I'll tell you, the thing about this feral one is that what we have in your mind's eye, if you can picture the, the zip line 
running from J.T. Whitlow's. Now, what he did is he put like a, a metal post, you know, like one of the metal posts on them old swing sets, like buried that into some concrete in the ground and like attached a zip line to that thing. And then he did the same thing to mine because we tried other things before. I mean, you attach them to the trailers, you peeling off siding like nobody's big business, especially if you got some big old boys coming down that thing like Myron Curtis was going to try it out. J.T. Whitlow, he ain't small neither. But anyhow, you can see uh, uh, between them two posts, that zip line that runs, you know, it starts a little higher so that you can kind of go downhill like that away to a lower uh, pole that's next to my trailer. Now, there's a lot of problems uh, that you figure out after the fact. You remember when I asked you just a second ago, like what could go wrong? Well, uh, don't even speculate any longer. Let me just tell you, Candy Dilroy. Uh, she ain't a big girl, you know, so she, and good thing because she could only hold that zip line with one arm because she holding on to a feral cat with the other one. And then what we did was we filled up a kitty poo because uh, the w weather's heating up where I am. And you fill that thing full of water, you got a water hose running into it, and it filled up. And what you do is you dismount. Now, like if you're looking straight ways from JT Whitlow's trailer, it's just to the right. Uh, it ain't right directly under the zip line, so you kind of got to swing off at the end and land in that thing, you know, stick to landing. Well, Candy get over there, and that little feral kitty cat, once it got over there, it screamed. I guess it didn't see the water, or, didn't, or it didn't have a lot, a lot of experience with zip lines, so it didn't know if it should be, uh, what it should be doing. Yeah, it's, it's out of control. It didn't have no control. It was getting held by candy. It was getting uh, sent through the air on a zip line. That cat didn't know up from down, didn't know what was going on. So I ain't mad at it for screaming. I just didn't know it could scream. It did not meow. Okay, I want you to understand that this cat did not meow, scream. And then it landed kitty claw, its little kitty claws out. So it's got them fingernails that, that are on a cat, kitty cat claws, and it landed on that kitty poo. So a kitty cat busted the kitty poo. Kitty poo was set up just, you know, just that side for a dismount. So all of a sudden, this party just started, and now the kitty poo is deflated. And then eventually, once them little tiny kitty cat claw punctures, uh, the air seeps out of them, well, then the water starts coming out. It ain't a fast process because it, 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 it ain't got big old claws, this little one. So basically, it's like, well, I mean, you can still dismount if you want to into the kiddie pool, but you're just landing on some plastic that's covering some gravel. It ain't full of water no more. It ain't inflated with air. It's just like a saggy sip, slip inside on, a, on gravel. So it, it's going to hurt you, basically, what I'm telling you if you try to dismount now. So Myron Curtis was there, and he's like, let me have a try at this. We're like, go for it, Myron. Now, Myron got a hefty body, carry some girth on him, and he ain't got the strongest upper body strength. So he got there, and all of a sudden, first of all, his strength just lowered that zip line. So you got to pull your legs up. Now we asking him to do abominable work, too, to bring up the abominables, you know, because you got to use that muscle in your gut uh, to bring them knees up. And then you got to use your biceps and your triceps and your forceps to hold on to the zip line. Now, Myron's putting along there, uh, ain't going too fast because the weight, and he's just dragging it. All of a sudden, he's trying, he trying to get his feet off the ground, and his knees is dragging the gravel, but not fast. I mean, it ain't going fast. It's like uh, you watching this thing in slow motion. And then it gets to the point where Myron just stand up and he walking. So he just holding the zip line thing over his head and he walking down there and then he just let go. And he's like, man, that wasn't nothing. I was like, well, it could have been a lot worse, Myron. Could have been a lot worse if that thing was going top speed and you ran into the side of my trailer. That's when I figured, hey, uh, JT put that thing, you know, my trailer side is the landing side of the zip line. It don't go two ways. Like you got to drag it back up the incline a little bit and then you, you carry it, you start it at JT's and you carry it all the way over to that pole right by my trailer. And if you don't let go fast enough, it's going to sling you right into my trailer. So that's what I'm seeing all of a sudden. I'm like, well, Myron, uh, it could have gone a lot worse for me and probably you too. I mean, between you and the siding on my trailer, you're going to win that every time, but uh, you still going to feel it. You know, there, there's some structure to that and I'd like to keep it that way. You know, I don't want no hole in my, my trailer where skaters can get in or even the fireflies or waspers or dirt daubers, nothing like that. So uh, Myron tried it. He felt my Meemaw came out and she, you know, I can tell when she's interested in something where she's kind of like, hmm, Pinkle Boone, what in the world's going on over there? 
So she come out, there's a lot of uh, commotion and folks getting excited. And Candy Dilroy, for, I mean, dropping a feral cat into a kitty poo, uh, she had a pretty good ride over there, though. It kind of did what a zipline post to do. And so Meemaw kind of curious like that away, and we almost got her on that thing. Uh, about that time, though, Mabel Childress drove up with Brandy Lynn. That's her uh, granddaughter-in-law, you know, her, her grandson's Brody Childress. And they's in that Ford Windstar with their little boy, uh, Brody and Brandy Lynn's little boy at BW, and he wear cleats everywhere he go, and he hop out because he want to play, and he's friends with Will Dilroy. Don't matter no how, but what I'm saying is uh, crowds started gathering in the trailer park, and, uh, and not just any crowd. Now, all of a sudden, Mabel Childress, I don't know whose idea it was, uh, to bring that Ford Windstar and the Childresses into the trailer park. I ain't mad at Brandy Lynn. I like her and her little boy BW. Of course, Brody, but he's at work. He wasn't there. And Mabel, the thing about it is, and you know as well as I do, if you listen to two seconds of this podcast ever, that my Mima and Mabel can't be on the same property uh, without something going wrong. So all of a sudden, uh, Mima will see her, and uh, she think Mabel going to get on this zip line and she ain't about to let Mabel uh, ride the zip line in her trailer park before she do. And I'm thinking, Mima, you ain't got to do this. You know, even though 30 seconds before, we were like, Mima, you got to do this. But then once I seen like she actually might try and she doing it just out of spite to show up Mabel. And then Mabel, I don't think she knows what was going on. She's just riding shotgun and Brandy Lynn's like, oh, we got to go check out the new zip line. I don't know. You know, I wasn't there for that conversation. But all I'm saying is uh, she pulled over to let BW out and see his little friends and play a little bit. And I think Mabel, like, like I said, just along for the ride, but all of a sudden she said, what we got going on here? Then you see her unbuckle. You know about that? I see Mabel reached over her uh, crossways, over her uh, torso to push, uh, to mash that Windstar seatbelt button. And then it, I guess it's broke. It don't like sling back like it posted, like she had to drag it back over. And then she could uh, unlock the door. And I don't know if it's child locks or whatever. It took about, uh, it seemed like 45 seconds, which is a long time watching somebody fiddle with a lock on a Windstar. And then she opened that thing. And uh, I had to run some interference. You know, I kind of step in between. And they about 75 feet apart at this point. Uh, but I don't know what it is. But they move a lot faster when they see somebody they don't like. You know, Mabel and Mima. So they'll, they'll just go right to each other like magnets. And then, then they just start fighting. It could be fist to cuffs, as they say. Uh, a lot of times it's wrestling. Uh, Mabel's been in many an arm bar, thanks to my Mima. So I just didn't know what was going to happen. And I was like, okay, are you, are you guys going to do this or not? And Meemaw was like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, well, I don't think you should, Meemaw, because you've seen what Myron done to that zip line, and I don't know if Meemaw's much lighter than Myron Curtis. I said, we just we ain't, we ain't tested the weight limit on this thing, and it ain't going to be fun unless you can bring your knees up like, under your chin like you do in a cannonball. And she goes, well, just let me try this, Tavin. So uh, Meemaw, Meemaw make it about 10 feet. And then, you know how somebody, when they start running, but they, they legs can't keep up with their body? So she, she zip line it for about 10 feet. Boy, she let go of that. She didn't have the strength. And then her little feet are pitter-patter, pitter-patter. And boy, now her head's leaning forward. Once her head's leaning forward, I was like, boy, this ain't good. This ain't good at all, and I don't know what to do here. And so uh, I have to tell you, for all of his faults, uh, Myron Curtis took one for the team, really sacrificed herself. So I'm telling you, Mima, she was in a spring moo and her head was getting way ahead of her feet. I mean, it was like she's leaning steady way too forward. And she started going down, and Myron, you know, there ain't no, like, air mattress, nothing you can throw down. So Myron throwed his whole body down, and boy, rolled under there, and Mima landed. Boy, she hit, like, her, her shoulders and her neck on the small of Myron's back and just kind of bounced, you know, kind of like, and then she rolled off and just kind of gently, like right there on the gravel. Now, Myron, boy, he all scuffed up. I mean, it looked like he got attacked by a peacock on the chin and he got gravel on his cheeks and his face. And, uh, boy, I, I give him a little clap, you know, just slow clap from Myron. She's like, Mima, you okay? She's like, I'm fine. And then Mabel's like laughing at her and, May My and Mima just point to the zip line, show the little self-control. said, okay, your turn, Mabel. You know, it's like she's thinking in her head, she goes, there ain't no way Mabel can do this zip line, and I don't need to fight her. If she want to show off on the zip line so bad, why don't I just let her kind of thing? So we working on uh, Myron a little bit. He's sitting up now. JT's gal, Whitney, she there with an air horn. Uh, which got taken away pretty quick by Brandy Lynn Childress. They friends, so they know each other, and Brandy Lynn just had to say, not today, you can't do this. You got old ladies out here, you don't want to give Mabel or Meemaw a heart attack, you don't want that on your conscience, give me that thing. So all of a sudden, uh, Whitney's bringing Band-Aids out of JT's trailer so that uh, you know they can nurse Myron's chin back to health or whatever. 
Mabel grabbed a hold of that zip line and she wanted to do a little run and start, so she shuffled back. Brandon Lynn's like, Granny, you ain't gotta do this. And Mabel don't listen to nobody. So she run back, and I tell you, she might have taken one step, but that's being generous. She might have got half a step in, and boy, she lost her balance, buddy, but she wasn't going to let go of that zip line. So her body goes front ways. That zip line stuck. Like it, the handle ain't sliding on the line like it posted. It. it just stuck. So now uh, Mabel's steady holding on. She got a grip like a firecracker. I don't know that a firecracker has good grip, but it make a statement is what I'm saying. And she ain't letting go. So she, her body will fly forward, but then her little head and her little tiny hands that are holding on to that zip line, uh, they stay in back ways where the zip line handle is. And she just fling forward like she's going to do like you know, like a backflip on a trampoline, but there ain't no trampoline and she ain't letting go. So her little legs flip into the air. She had one of, she had a little short heel sandals, something like summertime, springtime, you know, cooling off your big old toes. She got, she got corn, she got bunions. That ain't the point of this story, but she kicked off a handle and then uh, she flung back so much, uh, her hair, her head flopped back and a wig popped off. And I figured, I mean, sometimes she wear a wig and it wasn't like Reberis and like, oh, Mabel's got a wig on, but it falled off. And that was enough for Mimo to, you know, just tear into her like that away. And then Mabel's arms were hurting. They said, uh, Brandon Lynn's like, let go, Granny. Just let go of the zip line. It ain't going to go right now. Stuck. So Mabel let go, and she had to go uh, turn around and find that find that wig that fell off. She had a short heeled sandal to chase down, and she started losing her balance. And so she got down on one knee, and then she just throwed up. So now we got a zip line at the end of it. It's a deflated kitty poo with no order in it, nothing like that. At the other end, Mabel Childress down on one knee like she just scored a touchdown, but she didn't. She threw it up under the zip line. So where folks would normally stand to start the zip line, where well, they'd be standing in Mabel's throat up. So you see how this went from a great idea to all of a sudden some sort of circus that nobody want to pay to get a ticket to go to? So that's where we at now. And Meemaw starts shaking her head, and you could tell Meemaw, for as mean as she is and as mean as Mabel is, uh, she knows as well as anybody, like a good Dr. Pepper, can, can help an help a upset tummy. And I kid you not, they didn't say nothing about it. Meemaw came out of her trailer with a cold Dr. Pepper and his old bottle one. Meemaw got a hold of some of them old glass bottle ones, and my Meemaw, for not having a lot of money, she'll spend it on that kind of stuff, and all of a sudden... And if she don't have money, she borrowed from me. But that's another story. And she popped the thing on that, and she just handed that to Mabel and walked away. Now, that ain't maybe you think that ain't the nicest thing, but the fact that Mima, like did something like that to help settle down uh, Mabel's rowdy guts after having that little episode on the zip line, hey, happy Easter to everybody. I mean, it's carrying on into the rest of the month, I hope. But anyhow, that's what's looking like at the whole you know, thing. So then we had Coach Hicks. Uh, he heard about this thing, you know, a little bit later, and we brought him in to help us set up some sort of safety stuff since he had lifeguard at the city poo, and you know he owns uh, Thunder Punch boxing gym in town, and uh, he even gave me a whistle. Well, he handed it to me because he was going to demonstrate a dismount off the zip line, and I blowed the whistle because I know that's what you do with whistles. Uh, kind of surprised, folks. Not like J.T. Whitlow's gal Whitney with her air horn, but uh, it's still a little bit jarring. I'm not sure what got into me at that point, but once Coach Hicks seen that I had that whistle in my mouth, he just let me have it. He wasn't going to ask for it back. And truth be told, I wasn't planning on doing it, but it's just you can't hold a whistle without blowing it, best, best I know. So that's how it happened. Yeah, here's the deal. There ain't no real safe way like that you can dismount on a zip line that starts and ends right next to two trailers, like I explained. JT used that pole by his trailer, and then we got that swing set pole by, by mine, too. So hitting a trailer, uh, mine specifically, was going to be a common outcome, best I could tell. And, I, you know, I don't know the answer, but I'm too excited to shut the whole party down. I mean, I'm excited about this, too. Coach Hicks grabbed a hold of, uh, of the whole zip line handle over by JT, and he stepped up on JT's porch. So that's a new idea. And then he jumped off the porch, 
and off Coach Hicks zipped. Now, if you know anything, Mabel Childress and Meemaw, uh, they take Coach Hicks' water aerobics class, and I think when they see him, they giggle, and they kind of flirt with him, and all that grossed me out. I don't want to spend too much time talking about that, but they was out in their lawn chairs like they was watching a, you know, front row seats to their favorite show, and it's Coach Hicks in a tank top and cowboy boots and his little swim trunks uh, zipping across Chancellor Park uh, from one side of the trailer by J.T. Whitlow's uh, over to mine across the ways there. And he's picking up speed, picking up speed, picking up speed. And um, he also had on sunglasses. I couldn't see it in his eyes because he had on them sunglasses, but I could see it on his face. And his face was saying, I did not think this thing through. And you know that's crazy when, when the most uh, qualified feller uh, at the party is a little bit worried about this too. About that time, Mima uh, was in that, that lawn chair and she had a she pulled a super soaker out from under that chair because uh, she just liked to keep it handy, especially when, uh, you know, it's hot outside and folks is running around. That's something she liked to do. But then, you know, she's she's looking at Coach Hicks and she's thinking, boy, what, what do I need to do here? And she set that super soaker down because, you know, she she got a she got a, a, a crush on Coach Hicks is what I'm thinking. And she was thought, oh, I could I could spray him. She goes, no, I could spray anybody but him kind of thing. So I don't want to make him mad. I'm just, I'm speculating. I ain't in my Meemaw's head, and I wouldn't want to be there too long anyhow. But I'm thinking uh, she went from, oh, I'm going to do what I normally do when the sun's out and I got my super soaker to, hmm, maybe I need to do something else. I'm getting grossed out. Well, he picking up spade, and he's going to have to hit my trailer. He's going to have to hit my trailer, he gonna have, or he's going to have to dismount into a deflated kitty poo or steady drop right there before he gets to any of that. And if, you know, now he's going fast enough where uh, good luck landed on your legs. I mean, he might do it, but I don't know. By that time, Coach Hicks brings him knees up, and he's pulling them up by his head while he holds on to the zip line handle like he's turning himself into a little ball, a little ball of Coach Hicks. While he's bringing them legs up, one of his boots falls off. Meemaw starts shuffling down them, uh, out of that lawn chair over there uh, like they just brought ham out at the buffet trying to get over to Coach Hicks so fast so she can return that boot to him. Come on, Meemaw. Coach drops his leg once he tosses that boot and then pulls them legs back up so fast, and then he lets go of that zip line. Now Coach Hicks is rotating in the air, one boot off, sunglasses still on, and somehow he's turning this into a stunt show because he hits the ground before that deflated kitty poo, which is off to the side, and he lands on his feet. And he lifts up the barefoot, and he slides with that one boot on. I don't know how Coach Hicks, old D.W. Hicks, does it, but he makes every situation look like he's in control the whole time, like that was all part of his plan kind of thing. Kids are clapping. Folks is excited. Like, I thought it was going to be super embarrassing. But here's Coach Hicks sticking the land in stray dogs has stopped chewing on old shoes and McDonald's wrappers to watch that action. And everybody's clapping. Meemaw shuffled over to Coach Hicks, boot in hand, kind of smiling, giving that boot back to Coach Hicks. Brandy Lynn Childers, you know, she's there in that Ford Windstar. And she's got Mabel over there. Mabel's out of the chair. She's running over there like she's going to do something. Brandy Lynn's trying to wonder like, hey, do I need to break this up? Is Mabel going to attack Meemaw or is she going to go hug Coach Hicks? You know, and they both all near each other. How's this going to go? Her, Mabel's little perm's just bouncing on her head. Uh, and that's because it was underneath the wig that's been on the ground. And Brandy Lynn's just waiting to see what's happening, kind of like a deer in headlights. Who knows? Uh, who knows how this is going to turn out, right? But I know, I know what Mabel thinks about Coach Hicks. I know what my Meemaw thinks about Coach Hicks. And uh, by that time, though, Coach Hicks is putting the, that boot back on and giving instruction to me and JT. He says, he y'all fellas, you got one dangerous zip line here. Kids are going to get hurt. Adults, too. Paramedics, be called. I got to go. And then Meemaw just hollers, thanks, I'll see you at the water aerobics. And Coach nods as Mabel waves, that, and she's watching that exchange, wondering why Coach is leaving. And Meemaw notices Mabel, and then she, you know, Meemaw starts to try to rub it in. I'm glad I could give your boot back to you. You know, she's making sure Mabel heard that. And Mabel's eyes widen as she looks at Coach and back to Meemaw, and then she's thinking, she gave, she gave Coach Hicks a boot. I can't believe that. And then Meemaw smiles at Coach, and he climbs back in his truck. It's a double cab. Meemaw shuffles back to her trailer. Me and JT kind of like look at each other. I got my new whistle in hand. Sounds like this is dangerous, you know, I say to JT, and JT nods while Will Dilroy jumps off a card table onto another kiddo, and Candy Dilroy's getting scratched by two feral cats. I guess they teamed up on her. 
and a small fire started by the pile of car fluid 15 feet from Meemaw's trailer. So I guess you could say Chancellor Park was already dangerous. So, so for now, uh, we keeping the zip line. I was proud of Meemaw, though, for not rubbing it in any more than she already did once Mabel found out she missed out on the fun. I mean, she didn't miss out on the fun. She just got, she didn't get to Coach Hicks' boot as fast as Meemaw did. That's bottom line. She did get a Dr. Pepper, and she throwed up. Good thing Coach Hicks started on that porch and didn't stand in that throat up. That would have set uh, her back in his eyes, I guess, or she would have been worried about that. We got that hosed off, too, though. Anyways, uh, nobody got hurt, especially Mabel, thankfully, too bad. So she can't find a way to sue Meemaw or Chancellor Park or nothing like that. And JT, he was just shaking his head like he just knows this is a safe zip line. Like he put in the work, but he knows this is going to work. It's going to be a good thing. Maybe it's a rough trial run, but things are going to get better. Well, he got on and started picking up speed on that zip line, and he had the same problem Coach Hicks had. He had to figure out how to dismount. Only his thing is JT didn't figure it out, so he went feet first into my trailer and held on even after impact. Creased the siding on my trailer, and once that zip line settled, he kind of just dropped off. Like you ain't high enough above the ground, so you got to have your legs up if you an adult, so you ain't dragging your feet, and JT just starts walking with a limp. So we'll see how long this zip line's going to work. I mean, I know he wanted it to work so bad, and after Coach Hicks left, he's like, no, this thing's going to work, and then that happens, so I don't know. Then out of my periphery, I seen Mabel Childers dart from the front porch of Meemaw's trailer toward uh, the Ford Windstar, so she'd been over there. I don't know if she was returning that glass Dr. Pepper bottle, and then she heading toward Brandy Lynn's Windstar, and she climbs in, and Brandy Lynn turns around. She'd been outside talking to Candy Dilroy's mama and figured it's time to go, so, so they just drove off. And it was very, you know, no goodbyes or salutations or whatever they called him. Mima uh, bolts out of her trailer, though, at about the same time and notices that her super soaker's gone. Where's my gun? She hollers. Well, I know I just seen Mabel bolt, and I put two and three together, and I said, I think Mabel just took off with it, Mima. So Meemaw asked me to drive her to town against my better judgment. I did. Here we are in her 91 book, Regal, heading to Mabel's house when we see the wind start sutter me up, which is Coach Hicks' laundromat that he owns. Not Coach Hicks. That's uh, Ricky Don Pearson runs that. Of course, we know Coach Hicks runs the boxing gym. But Ricky Don, he got a double cab F-250, and it's parked out in front of sutter me up, and Gilbert Phillips works for him there. Anyhow, I don't reckon Brandy Lynn know that Mabel had taken off with any stolen goods from Chancellor Park, but she had. Mabel had that gun, and Buddy, she she had it with her. Brandy Lynn's already inside with bags of laundry. We park, and as soon as I step out of Meemaw's car, I get hit with a stream of water from a super soaker. What in the world? I'm just here to try to get this thing back. I ain't trying to get in a fight. Meemaw's fooming, especially after she gave her a Dr. Pepper. She circles around the other side of that Windstar. I could only see so much from where I was standing, but Mabel was standing, and then she wasn't. Mabel had been hiding behind that wind store and just, you know, fired a shot and tried to duck. And then Meemaw went around and all of a sudden Mabel disappeared. Then I heard a grunt and you could hear it's like a scuffle over there. Why didn't I leave Meemaw at the trailer park and just do this myself? You know, I'm thinking like that away. Too late now. I holler, y'all guys, knock it off. Somebody's going to get hurt. By the time I get around to the back of that band, Meemaw's kicked that water rifle away and has Mabel in a reverse headlock and she's rocking her like she's about to play Mabel's face uh, right in the parking lot, like she, she's about to like, here we go, I got you in the headlock, and now you about to, you about to say hello to the, to, the, to the parking lot here, to the asphalt, to the blacktop, you know. And I say, knock it off, Meemaw. I reach down, and I pry Mabel's little permed head out of Meemaw's grip, and I help Meemaw stand up as Mabel hops to her feet like she's ready to box, but I know she ain't. And that wig is sitting in the seat of that Windstar riding shotgun. I guess Mabel's been sitting on it. Thankfully, Brandy Lynn's seen it, and she sprints out to run some interference like uh, she always got to do if th those two gals is together, and she's like, back up, both of y'all. Meemaw wipes her nose like it was running, but it wasn't. You owe me for that water gun. That was my order, she hollered. Good luck, that water's long gone, kind of thing. Now they're arguing over water. Meemaw smiled. Maybe I'll ask Coach Hicks if he can let me into the city poo to fill up my water gun. Well, now Mabel's mad. You leave him out of this. Meemaw, let's go. If y'all gals ain't gonna apologize, then we're getting out of here. And then Brandy Lynn hollers, Granny, get in here. And she waves Mabel inside. And Mabel just hollers, This ain't over. I'm thinking, no kidding, Mabel. 
Neither of them let this stuff go. Even after that Dr. Pepper, I thought we'd turned the corner. Meemaw picks up her super soaker, that old super soaker, you know, her gun. That's what we came for. She got some scuff marks on her moo moo, but I think that's on her. Nobody told her to drop Mabel and get her in reverse headlock like she did. By the time we got back to Chancellor Park, Ricky Don Pearson was there putting Will Dilroy's arm in a soft cast, and JT was standing over a bent swing set pole on the ground. Now, Ricky Don's a volunteer firefighter, too, so you're wondering how he got from Sutter Me Up over to my trailer park so fast. Uh, he uh, kind of on call with a walkie-talkie or whatever. Ricky Don, he ain't full-bore paramedic, but, you know, he that volunteer firefighter, so I guess Coach Hicks is kind of right. It didn't take long. So it might be back to the drawing board with this zip line. They some of the best things in life, though. As you know, they take time, so we, we liable to give it a little more time and keep working on it. Well, hey. I sure am glad y'all joined me on a Tab and Dillard podcast today. I know you got a busy life, so please know I appreciate you spending a little time with me. And remember them show notes I talked to you about? Check them out and leave a comment and, and rate this podcast wherever you listen to this week. I sure appreciate it. And I got a big announcement coming soon, but I can't tell you yet because it just ain't time. But I'll tell you, there's some information on Team Burger Shed that you're going to want to look out for. And hey, if you ain't stole a super soaker and then been caught at the laundromat and reverse headlocked in the parking lot, you having a pretty good week. Me, I'm Tavin Dillard. This is the Tavin Dillard Podcast. Till next time, y'all guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>